Hi there, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is The Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City's Aviation Department and real estate developer Trammell Crow Company have broken ground on a second building at the KCI Intermodal Business Center. The site takes advantage of a location between the airport and I-29 and expects to attract warehouse and light manufacturing tenants. Nowhere else in the region do we have the ability to do air cargo, and so we, we think we've got a nice uh, niche market again in the Midwest, centrally located. Obviously, we're all, the city's already a rail hub, so you bring in air, you bring in transportation, you bring in uh, rail, you got everything right here ready to go. Local private commercial property owners may be eligible to receive funding for energy efficiency and renewable energy upgrades through the Property Assessed Clean Energy, or PACE, financing program. The PACE program is run by the Missouri Clean Energy District. That's a statewide entity that Kansas City recently joined thanks to the City Council's unanimous support. To learn more about this program and to see if your property might qualify, please visit mced.mo.gov. The city's Rich Knoll Paysetter Award Review Board has awarded Stephanie Boyer of Municipal Court with the Rich Knoll Paysetter Award. Boyer works tirelessly to help drug court and mental health court participants regain healthy, crime-free lives. Each month, the Rich Knoll Paysetter Award program recognizes city employees who are skilled in communication, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.org slash paysetter. The penguins are here. The Kansas City Zoo now has 40 very frosty penguins living in the brand new $15 million Hellsburg Penguin Plaza exhibit. Opening day alone attracted 9,000 visitors. This exhibit features four species of penguins, outdoor and indoor penguin pools, and amazing views of these very cute little birds. Check out these little birds at the Kansas City Zoo open daily from 9.30 a.m. to 4 in the afternoon. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. The year is winding down, but there's no shortage of free and low cost things to do. Mark your calendars and bring your friends and family. Out of town guests are welcome too. A free traveling exhibit that tells the stories of Missouri residents during the Civil War is open on Saturday afternoons from 1 to 4 p.m. through December 22nd at the Battle of Westport Museum in Swope Park. The exhibit, called The State Divided, The Civil War in Missouri, includes stories of families struggling to survive, African American soldiers in Missouri, and the Battle of Westport. For more information, visit Battle of Westport 1864 Org. Veterans Day is Monday, November 11th. Join a public celebration of their service at the National World War I Museum at Liberty Memorial. A color guard parade begins at 9.15 a.m., followed immediately by a rousing performance of the American Legion Band. A ceremony honoring veterans is set for 11 a.m. And here's a bonus. The museum is free and open to the public the entire day. Bring home a Thanksgiving turkey, if you're lucky, at Turkey Bowling on Ice from 2 to 3 p.m. Saturday, November 23rd. Frozen turkeys replace bowling balls at this fun family event at the Line Creek Community Center and Ice Arena at 5940 Northwest Wacomus Drive. The $6 fee includes skate rental. Santa is coming and bringing Santa's Wonderland to several Kansas City parks this holiday season. Spend an evening celebrating with festive live music, entertainment by the Starlight Stars, hot chocolate, light displays, and of course, a visit from Santa and his friends. The event is free and will be held at four locations from Thursday, December 5th through Sunday, December 8th. For more information about these locations and other events, see the Parks and Recreation website at caseyparks.org or give us a call at 816-816. 513-7500. Did you know there's a way to get answers from KCPD without calling 911? The number 234-5111 is available for non-emergency inquiries. 
Communications Supervisor Jeannie Rast explains. The number 2345111 is answered or monitored on a 24 hour basis here in the communications unit. Whenever they call in, they could ask things um, about illegally parked cars, about a stealing that might have happened at their house. They don't know when it happened or who was the suspect. Um, a noise disturbance if there's not a fight involved, but it's a large crowd. Stolen autos. If they don't know who's taken the stolen auto, they do have a time span, let's say quite a while or overnight, and they don't know who the suspect is, also that kind of call. 311 takes care of calls for service that would pertain to animal health calls. Um, the illegally parked cars also, if they're a nuisance or abandoned, they take those. But with us, we're more of an informational, um, where you could call, a number where you can call and ask any type of question. We do get some calls where they are not police related, but we will make references or possibly answer the question if we know the answer. The 911 calls come in to the call center and they are the prior priority. So those calls are answered first. And then once all the 911 calls are answered, it would go to that informational line of 234 51111. And that way, um, it kind of gives a higher priority to the 911 callers. Some of the things that are asked to on the number that are non-emergency, if there's a race downtown or an event downtown or anywhere in the city, if any of the streets are going to be closed, they can call. Um, a lot of times, too, if there's storm-related questions, um, people are trying to see what areas might have problems um, to check on loved ones. That might be the number to call would be the 234-5111. The 234-5111 number is the non-emergency number for the police. The city also provides information from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday at their 311 number or 513-1313. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Sustainability, it's a top priority in our city. And we Kansas Cityans have worked hard over the past 10 years to implement green initiatives and programs. This focus has a triple bottom line approach to promote social equity, economic vitality, and environmental quality. The city's KC Green Team has also encouraged residents to be more green and recognizes neighborhoods that have implemented their own sustainable programs. Earlier this year, the KC Green Neighborhood Recognition Program was launched. This award program selects four neighborhoods that have worked to improve sustainability and recognizes them publicly for their outstanding work. With more than 1,500 homes in their historic neighborhood, Pendleton Heights residents have been very creative in greening up their 100 plus year old neighborhood while maintaining its historic charm. Being in a historic neighborhood where the houses are over 100 years old and a lot of them needed updating, um, just kind of by the nature of saving an old house, it's greener than building a new one. So it's just kind of part of our philosophy. There's a lot of reusing and trading parts and old doors and trim and who can use what. And so a lot of that is just part of the nature of our neighborhood. And so then we kind of put that in um, more action this year as we started the community garden and um, curbside glass recycling started last year and then the composting this year so it's been a lot of things that grew out of just the nature of the people who live here um, which I think is fun because it's not forced it's just kind of who we are. Curbside compost and glass pickup by bicycle, a community garden compost pile, and an urban orchard with more than 40 peach trees are just some of the green programs implemented in this neighborhood. But they don't just work together. This group of green-minded residents also started a scooter club. There are currently seven residents who own and use scooters to go to work and have fun. The neighborhood currently has five LEED certified houses, two that use renewable energy like wind or solar, and seven that have worked with Energy Works KC to complete energy audits. The Avalon View neighborhood has turned garden and landscaping into a competitive sport. Residents work together to install rain gardens, backyard vegetable gardens, rain barrels, and enhanced front yard landscapes. They share plants, vegetables, and their green knowledge at neighborhood meetings, and they even hold plant exchanges. 
New bike lanes and sidewalks are currently being installed at the request of residents who work to beautify their neighborhood and make it more sustainable. We trade off flowers, we trade off uh, vegetables, and I know that sounds weird, trading off vegetables, but we do. We actually dry our seeds, and we actually give each other seeds, we give each other bulbs, and um, Avalon View is just a friendly place to live. It's clean, we love gardening, we love vegetables, we love sharing, and we love caring for each other and having each other's backs. And that's Avalon. The Ivanhoe neighborhood has instituted a number of green projects, including turning an empty lot into a neighborhood garden. It provides fresh produce for residents. With the assistance of the University of Missouri Extension Service, Ivanhoe has held classes for residents on gardening and composting and begun a Scout Sprouts program. This program works with neighborhood scout troops to plant and harvest crops in the community garden and in raised beds adjacent to the Ivanhoe Community Park. The neighborhood also installed rain barrels and encourages backyard gardens. We're very proud to be able to um, show you this garden here at the corner of 37th and Woodland, which was once a vacant lot. And we partnered with the Master Gardeners of uh, University of Missouri Extension for a five-year agreement to come in, turn this lot into what you see now which is almost a third acre um, vegetable and fruit garden. We have several plots that the residents adopted out and they come over and take care of those but also we grow for a farmers market. So a lot of this produce which is pesticide free we are able to sell at a market but also we give back to the community. We provide a resource of food uh, fresh, affordable, pesticide-free produce for residents in this neighborhood because we are considered a food desert. So it's been real fun seeing how the neighbors are reconnecting with one another and also just showing what can be done in a neighborhood like this that has a lot of vacant land, a lot of you know empty lots and, and houses that are torn down that we can do great things here in the neighborhood with that with that land and it's beautifying the neighborhood um, it's unifying the neighborhood also we found out that you know when you have eyes on your garden or your green space you tend to have less crime so we're very excited about that as well the city center neighborhood has not only implemented many green initiatives they also developed a long-range neighborhood redevelopment and sustainability plan to guide them they have worked with public, community, philanthropic, and corporate groups to leverage funding for projects like an urban orchard, a rain garden, and neighborhood Wi-Fi to encourage telecommuting and to increase education and training opportunities. The urban orchard has more than 90 trees and provides fresh fruit for the Society of St. Andrew to provide to local shelters. In addition, the neighborhood has two neighborhood gardens and a large rain garden that diverts thousands of gallons of rainwater from the sanitary sewer system. Congratulations again to all of our KC Green Neighborhood winners for their leadership and inspiration to other neighborhoods as they adopt similar sustainable measures in their own communities. Further information about KC Green Neighborhoods is posted at the city's website at kcmo.org slash kcgreen. If you missed it this year, while well, we encourage other neighborhoods to consider submitting an application, the city will open that process for the 2014 Neighborhood Recognition Program next spring. Looking ahead, the city's quick tax system will undergo routine maintenance and will be unavailable beginning Friday, November 8th at 5 p.m. until Monday, November 11th. The city appreciates the public's patience during this scheduled maintenance. The city continues its first round of fall curbside leaf and brush collections the week of November 4th for residents in the North Zone. On their regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. Now, the second round of leaf and brush pickup begins November 18th in the city's south zone. The second collection for north zone residents will be the week of December 2nd, and central zone starts December 9th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org trash and click on leaf and brush collection. In observance of the Veterans Day holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, November 11th. Residents who usually have Monday trash collection will receive that service on Tuesday, November 12th. Residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday, November 16th. 
For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.